G'day everybody and welcome to ACW's Thursday Night Anarchy. I'm your lead commentator, the wild one, Bruce Northaway. And tonight, we are coming to you live from the ACW Arena. And yet, tonight is the last semi-final matches in the Gold Rush Tournament, as well as a surprise championship match. But I should also remind you, to today, ACW Thursday Night Anarchy is sponsored by Dr. Buy Our Shit. Whoops, wrong button. Warning, Dr. Buyer shit is not responsible for... Yeah, when using our products, don't bother trying to sue us. We have better lawyers than you do. They're not exaggerating. They are not exaggerating. But either way, let's get tonight started with the first match, which is going to be... Well, load her up. It's going to be a fatal four-way elimination tables match. The following is a fatal four-way elimination tables match. The rules are simple. To eliminate your opponent, you must physically put them through a table. And once you are put through a table, you are eliminated and must go back into the backstage area. Introducing first, from parts unknown, aka she'd tell you, but she'd have to kill you. The former assassin turned bodyguard, this is Sabre! Yeah, the former international women's champion who lost it to Helvia last month, but then Helvia only held it for a little bit before she lost it to Neko Dark. Well, Helvia did accept, did open up an open challenge and Neko Dark took it. I mean, a lot of wrestlers think they're so, you know, high and mighty that they think they can't be defeated, so they issue open challenges. That can turn out to be a mistake, but what can you do? And if you've never seen Sable without her shades on, then you're probably lucky because no one's ever seen her with her shades on. Only Bush Ranger has, and he won't tell what color eye she has. Because in his words, I tell you, but I'd have to kill you. How you like my Bush Ranger impression? Bruce, they could use some work. Critic. Okay, now introducing the second competitor in this match, representing the Punk Rage Sisters and the GCA slash NWW. From Equestria, she is the rocker, Melissa Ewing! There's real no stakes to this match, just, just fighting in general. The real stakes in matches come later in the semi and, and, and main event, which I will be in. JC, if you want, JC, I know you're backstage watching this somewhere, somehow. But just know this, it's not personal, it's not personal, so whatever happens between us, let's just shake hands backstage and still be mates afterwards, okay? Just, this is my way of saying, may the best man win. So no personal feelings after the match, alright? And now introducing the third competitor in this match. From parts unknown, but we all know she's from the deep pits of hell. This is the nurse of ACW, the demonic healer, Nurse Banshee. Yeah, she wears. She doesn't wear that face mask to protect her identity, or you know, to protect herself from germs. She wears it because it's a magically charmed mask. It muffles out any screams that she might do out of frustration. Though I do not want to see her and Flutter shout in a screaming competition. I think the world would go deaf for a year. And she is but one very creepy woman. That's all I got to say about that. And now introducing the final competitor in this match. Oh, here we 
go, hamming it up as per usual, and I'm pretty sure a demon with blue up with yellow eyes is backstage snarling at me right now. And I'm never talking like that again. But either way, introducing next, representing the subjects and the XPWL, this is the Grand and Magnificent. Hang on, I need to take a breath. Magic Mare! I can't believe we have to introduce her that way. Even Trixie's not that bloody um, egocentric. And that's saying something. If you've met her backstage. Or gone to one of her magic shows. But either way, what can you do? Oh, Mark, Jim. Chad, JC, or whoever, if you're back, if you're watching this right now and want to join me, just jump the rails and join me. You know, there's always going to be open seats and headsets for you. If you decide to join. I'm not going to force you, it's your, jo it's your choice. Yeah, Magic Man absolutely hamming this up. What the hell is she doing? You don't used to seeing a lot of pyro behind her uh, from seeing something like that. Yeah, but what can you do? Not bloody much, that's for sure. goes the pyro. At least she provides her own magically, unlike some people who blow the pyro budget. Remember, this is table match rules. What rules? No rules. Just put your opponent through a table. That's pretty much it. And this is elimination rules. It means the last woman standing is the victor. Like I said, there's no real stake to this match. Just bragging rights and the winner's paycheck. Alright. Sabre is ready. Melissa Ewing is ready. Nurse Banshee is ready. And finally, Magic Mare, the ham, is ready. And there goes the bell and the match is on. And I apologise, I've got to go use the announcer's room. But yeah, I know it's early, but I've got to do it. I've been holding it for a bit, so be right back. spring weather, it can't decide whether it wants to be a nice day, a fucking freezing day, or a hot day. Sometimes I hate it so yeah. But either way, let's get back to the match. And Ban Banshee just slid back into the ring, and wow, Kendo stick in the ring. Bloody hell. And Melissa, has, whoa, looks like we're about to see a double tip, nope, a meeting of the minds, a double nugget knocker. Try saying that a few times fast. That was not a challenge, don't. 
drop kick to the knee. Double shot, Irish whip, reversal over the top rope. And no, gone to the floor. And whoa! Kick to the back of the head. Oh, looks like we're about to see a baseball slide. German suplex. And Sable with a kendo stick and Melissa with a steel chair. And Melissa using that chair on Nurse Banshee. You better be careful. You don't want to piss the nurse off because you because who do you have to see after the match to be cleared to leave the arena? Nurse Banshee, so don't piss her off. And Trixie leaning on the top, leaning on the ropes as oh table picked up and a crack to the back of the head. Looks like she was about to set it up, but nope, Trixie stopped that from happening. Slid under the bottom rope and Trixie decides she's not going for that table. I guess she didn't look the, I guess she didn't like the look of that table. Kick to the midsection and punch the side of the head. From the outside, slip through and chop block. And Nurse Banshee sets up the first table in the match. And Sable walks over to the other table. Looks like we're about to see a, you know, roll of the dice snake eyes, but not this time. Chop block. And a kick, roundhouse kick blocked. And Trixie leans Nurse Banshee on the ropes. And what's she doing here? And oh, Jesus. The whiplash effect. And oh, back. A modified backbreaker. Elbow strike, elbow strike. And another elbow strike, forcing Trixie to let go. Punch to the side of the head, punch to the chest, and headbutt. And Sabre quickly gets back in the ring and looks like she wants Nurse Banshee. Whoa, 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 what? Did I just see that? Never bloody mind. And German suplex, kip up. Leg drop. And Sabre picks Banshee up and Irish whip to the turnbuckles. Punch blocked and Trixie grabbed another steel, another tape, I think, yeah, another table. And, oh, she just threw the table into the face of Nurse Banshee. And knee struck to the midsection. Well, Melissa looks like she was dragging Sabre to that table. And, oh, bloody hell. The rocket dropper on Trixie right onto that table. And back elbow, whatever Sabre was planning, but didn't happen. Drop kick. And Melissa pick it up and Irish whip and the table collapse. Roundhouse kick. And Sabre up very quickly. And there's Banshee through the table right into the face of Melissa. Right to the side of the head. And a snap suplex. And Trixie left the ring. And she's grabbing a third table. That's three tables in the ring right now. Not counting the announce table that's on the outside of the ring that I'm sitting behind. And what is Trixie? Trixie was thinking about something and cracks Melissa in the head with the steel with the table. And sets it up right near the ropes. And Melissa tried to do a kick, but. Magic Mare rolled through. Float over, DDT. Well, Sabre left the ring, but Nurse Banshee attacks Melissa. Irish went to the ropes, over the top rope. Oh, I guess Mag I guess she just wanted that out of the way, so she can do something to Magic Mare. Whoa, she tried to do something, but that table was in the way. Elbow strike, elbow strike. Another elbow strike, forcing her to let go. And Melissa back in the ring. Kick to the midsection and code breaker. And a double underhook. Wait, is this the grand? I think this is the grand spectacle. If I'm wrong, Jim or Mark, feel free to jump into the chat and tell me I'm wrong with that. No, I'm not drinking. I'm not even done drinking. <laughs> Don't look at me like that, Ranger. That was a joke. And Irish whip back into the ring. Besides, Ranger, I've got a match later tonight. You think I'm going to drink the day of my match? I wait till after the match and drink in celebration. Or drink in sorrow because I didn't win. Either way, I'm going to be drinking tonight. Roundhouse kick. And looks like both... And... and oh, well, almost simultaneous elbow strikes, forcing them both back. And super kick to the knee, and a super kick to the jaw. 
At least I'm assuming that's a, her jaw, because I've never... Yeah, that's a lie. I have seen Nurse Banshee with her face mask off. She did that to creep me out, because I was being a... Because I was refusing to pay attention to pay attention to what she was saying. You know, me claiming... You know, that whole me claiming I'm not hurt malarkey. Yeah, she scared me near half to death. Irish... Irish whip to the table, and... Sabre setting up the suplex, and... Melissa Ewing has been eliminated. And now that means Nurse Banshee, Magic Mare and Sabre are left. And face first right into the top turnbuckle. And Sabre with an Irish whip to the other side and a running bulldog. And Nurse Banshee trying to move the table so it can be picked up later. And Yurinagi. And that headlock. I have no idea what she calls that move because, well, for one, I've never heard her talk. And Nurse Banshee from behind. And a snap suplex. And Sabre tried to pick the table up. But Magic we have a well-aimed drop kick to the side of the head. Punch the chest. And a... Rocket dropper. And Magic Mare rolled out of the ring and took a table with her. Punch to the chest. Another punch to the chest. And... Oh, Mag... Well, trick. Why am I so confused right now? Don't look at me like that. And, oh, guillotine to the top rope. And Magic Mare picks up the table. And another table dropped out of the ring. She slid the table up back into the ring and... Well, the only ones in the ring right now are Sabre and Trick and Magic Man, a drop kick. And Nurse Banshee grabs the other table and slides that back into the ring. And Sabre deciding where she wants to set it up. She tried to set it up, but Trixie stopped her from doing it. I mean, oh, Magic Man, Magic Man, sorry, Magic Man. What the fuck am I doing? Kick to the midsection and overhead punch. house and Sabre just watching the fun right now but up oh, running knee strike Irish whip reversal and oh that was an awkward landing on that table <coughs> and Electro oh almost landed on the steel steps on the edge of it that is one impact you don't want trust me I felt it several fucking times on my head DDT on the table And going for several punches to the chest and, pu and a stomp to the midsection. And Irish whip straight back into the ring while, Ma while Nurse Banshee, jawbreaker. And another jawbreaker. And attempting a hip toss, but no, the rocket dropper again. Or I think she wants it to be known as the flatliner, but that is not the flatliner. And a, oh, bloody hell, the timing of that one. And I think Sabre looked out, but she's slowly getting up while Nurse Banshee was delivering a standing mud hole stomp. And a third table! Cracked into the face of Nurse Banshee as it slid and she slides it into the ring. Quickly follows it. There's only three wrestlers left in this tables match. And Sabre sets up the table in the corner. What in the hell is Sabre doing? I've got to stop trying to question Sabre. I mean, I've tried to ask Bush Ranger about, about Sabre, but the only thing I hear is, I do you, but I'd have to kill you. Freeze for, for the love of me. Would you stop trying to impersonate me? You're doing it wrong. That's the point, Ranger. It's cold making fun of you. Don't forget who pays your checks and who can turn into the big thing that you fear the most. I take back my insult. Good, keep it that way. And a big boot on, on Sabre from Nurse Banshee. I think she deliberately aimed the point of her heels to try to break the shades. But those shades are made of a special substance that can't break. Irish whip straight back into the ring. 
And Banshee with a steel chair and an unprotected chair shot on the, mag on the Magic Man. Oh, a backstabber. And Sabre is just watching the carnage on the outside. And no. Nope. Watch. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Bloody hell, the white noise. And a tr an attempting a baseball slide. That's what she was standing there for, but she wasn't quite on the money. And Sabre grabbing Nurse Banshee. He puts her under the table. What's she going to do here? And ho, ho, holy shit. Suplex. Nurse Banshee has been eliminated. Stomp on the ankle. And Magic Man slides underneath the ring and grabs the other table that's out there. And tosses it to the side. I guess she wasn't happy with that table. And a drop kick. So we're down to Magic Mare and Sabre. Place your bets, people. Who's going to win this match? Backbreaker. And going for that arm stretcher. And Magic Mare just stalking. No, she's gone back to that table. And we can see Nurse Banshee there. And... Magic Man slides the table into the ring. About to follow, but Irish Whip Sabre straight into the ring. And Sabre stalking Magic Man, but nope, Magic Man with a northern light suplex. Man, that is a lot of work that the ring crew is going to have to clean up before the next match. But either way, Sabre takes Magic Man right to the table. Wait, wait. I think Sabre's got... Attempting to go for a clean sweep and a power bomb right through the table. Magic Mare has been eliminated. Bloody hell, that was a match. But let's get the official word. Here is your winner, Sabre. Like I said, that was a hell of a match. And Sabre, what can you say about Sabre? That's not classified, Ranger. Look, how many times am I going to hear? Yeah, I know, I know. Let's get to the next match. And the next match... Hang on, I'm not happy with this. Yeah, let's just do it. The next match, we're about to see a non-title match. The following contest is a is a tag team tornado extreme rules non-title match. Introducing first, representing the bare knuckle brawlers, they are the ACW tag team champions from Blackpool, England and Birmingham, England, respectively. They are TNT and the Switchblade Arthur Knight, the bare knuckle. Brawlers! Well, these two are are one hell of a nasty tandem. Got to give them that. And I have been in the ring with both of them. The only one of the bare knuckle brawlers I haven't been in the ring with yet is Patrick Murphy. And honestly, I would love to be in the ring with him one day. Just not this day. I've got my own problems to deal with later tonight. Okay, now introducing their opponents. Representing the Black Hand. They are from the Realm of Darkness and the Realm of Chaos, respectively. They are the Scarecrow and the Creature Eric Inferno, the Unforgiven! I mean, I know recently Scarecrow challenged Shadow to a Carnival of Nightmares match, but there's been no word back on if Shadow's going to accept that match. In all honesty, I honestly, mate, 
Shadow, don't accept that match. You've got your own problems with Scalard. Don't try to drag Scarecrow into it. Besides, a Carnival of Nightmares match is basically a 15 to 20 minute Iron Man match, which is basically no holds barred. The only way to get the seasons is pinfall and submission. I know you've been in a match like that with Pyron, but Scarecrow is different to Pyron, mate. Just don't accept this challenge. Just trust me on that one, okay? The main reason I don't want him to accept it is because Scarecrow said he wants to add stakes to the match. If the inverted shadow wins, then Scarecrow will leave the black hand and take the Unforgiven with him and even give up the powers that Skalan gave him. But if Shadow wins, I mean if Scarecrow wins, he wants Skalan back at ACW. That's the main reason why I'm saying to you, Shad, don't accept this challenge. The last thing we want back in ACW was that witch. I mean, we only just got rid of her thanks to Dragon Lady. We don't want her back. Okay, the bare knuckle brawlers are ready. The Unforgiven is ready. Right, ref, ring that bell. There we go. Here, let's do this. And both going for... No, Irish went to the turnbuckle and monkey flip. And TNT taking on Scarecrow from behind with a German suplex. And the nut, the brawlers trade a dance partners. Offering several kidney shots and an elbow to the side of the head. Yet yeah, TNT is a master of joint manipulation tactics. In other words, he can make your body bend in ways it shouldn't. I mean, he'll even try to break your fingers for fun if you try to shake his hand backstage. Same as his sister. And hit, headlock takedown. And I knew TNT wouldn't submit from that. And that pushed off, attempting an elbow, Irish whip, high knee. Trying to go for a sit on but missed. And oh, the punch over the, the punch over the top rope. Guillotine on the top rope. And looks like we're at uh, with the one. Two, kick out. Yeah, I knew he wouldn't put Eric Infernal out that quickly. And places it, and stomp on the elbow. And body slam right on the C of the ACW logo. And Arthur Knight jumps out of the ring to try to, looks like he's gonna try to grab a toy and he grabs a steel chair. Close. That was either a clothesline or a drop kick or an analyst gone less dos. Yeah, don't ask me. I've seen it in some bloody um taco ads or whatever. Clothesline from behind. Roll through. Irish whip, reversal right into the corner. And Arthur Knight. What's he gonna do? Face first right in the top turnbuckle as TNT grabs. That was probably the table that didn't break in the previous match. Short arm clothesline. And Scarecrow walking around there. Oh, one. Kick out on one. He picks him up and what's he gonna do? Right on the ropes and... Knight jump through and reverse DDT. Knee strike, elbow strike, knee strike, elbow strike, elbow strike. Bloody hell, I just had a skip record. And a double leg takedown, and looks like we're about to see a sharpshooter from the creature Eric Infernal. Is he going to make him tap, snap, or nap? Nope. Arthur Knight fights out of it. TNT lights the fuse and goes for the pinfall. One, two, kick out on two. And now TNT measuring up the scarecrow. Looks like we're at the elbow. Nope, blocked it. Punch the side of the head and after night slides out of the ring to go up against the creature. And burning hammer, going for the pinfall. One, two, kick out on two. I don't think Arthur Knight noticed. Well, he's definitely noticed now as Scarecrow slides out of the ring. Looks like he wants to grab a toy. And, ooh, grabs a ladder. 
and Arthur Knight just copped a face full of ladder for his trouble. I mean, we're still yet to decide other number one contenderships for title matches at Rome City Rumble. I mean, two more, the last two semi-final matches tonight, but next week will be the grand final matches in the Gold Rush Tournament. The semi-main event, I need to remind you, is Pokemon Girl versus Sunset Shiver. The winner of that next week will challenge Vela. And tonight, me against JC the All-Star. The winner will go off against Stone Cold True Blue next week. And knowing, in this, and knowing my place in my career at the moment, I need this match. I need to get at least one more title run that isn't the Brass Knuckles Championship in my career. Rolled through and double knee to the kidneys as the creature grabs that painter's ladder and sets it up on the on the announce table. I guess the Spanish announce team is screaming us get a los dos right now. Wait, that's not what they're screaming. They're screaming, oi Dios mio, my apologies. And a European uppercut pinfall. One, two, kick out on two as TNT quickly slides in. He grabs the creature, picks him up, but forgot about the scarecrow behind him. Back elbow strike. And Irish whip over the top rope. And sleeper hole. Is he going to make TNT to... Wait, wait. I mean the creature's bleeding. Yeah, the creature's bleeding. I knew I heard maniacal laughter of joy. God, that guy's absolutely insane. I swear to God. And... Now nah, the creature lands on his feet. Springboard drop kick. He went straight past the he went switch he went straight past the switchblade to do that. And the scarecrow throws in the trash can. And oh shit, we're about to see the burning hammer for the second time tonight, right on the right on switchblade after night. Irish whip to the turnbuckles. Ooh, drop down. And a stop to the lower back. And the creature with a knee drop to the back of the head. And TNT shaking out the cobwebs and quickly returning to the ring with a trash can shot. Kick to the midsection and face first in the trash can. That must be one hell of an impact as TNT jumped back. And the punch over the top rope one more time, but he didn't catch all of it. Switchblade got straight back up and holy shit. Oh, face first. And detonator. Drop the plunger on the detonator. Gone for the pinfall. One, two, kick out on two. Man, if the Unforgiven win this match, they're probably one step closer to getting a championship opportunity. And Arthur Nice just walking around with a trash can. What's he gonna do with that? Stomp on the elbow. And Scarecrow rolls out of the ring. And cut the trash can into the face, but crossbody from the top rope on to the outside. Bloody hell, both of the Unforgiven are up on their feet, and Scarecrow looking for it. Oh shit, the sledgehammer. And a big boot, forcing them to drop it. I mean, honestly, those things are designed to break stone. Imagine what they can do to your bone. Irish Webb trying to go for the ring post. Back elbow and Eric Inferno measuring up and going for that grip lacrosse face. It didn't matter if that Arthur Knight tapped that out there. It's not going to count. The decisions have to be in the ring. And, oh, twisting German suplex. And the creature grabs TNT from behind and gut wrench suplex. German style. Stomp on the shoulder and face first. And a twisting German suplex. Oh, that's a hell of a chop block. European uppercut. Oh, he accidentally hit Arthur Knight. And Arthur Knight just smiled. I know TNT, Arthur Knight and Patrick Murphy love to fight in bars as well as drink it dry. Oh, the straight jacket. Power bomb! Gone for the pinfall. Come on, cameraman, really? One, two, three, that's it. Oh boy. 
Here is your, here are your winners. Scarecrow and Eric Infernal, the Unforgiven. Honestly, Shad, please do not accept the Scarecrow's challenge. Just so we can keep that witch out of ACW permanently. But that was a hell of a match. The kind of match I love to compete in and watch. But now it's time to get ready for the next match. And we're about to see something that we don't see too often here in ACW. We're about to see a special guest referee match. The following contest is a guest referee match. Now let's see who is the guest referee for this match. Well, from the pearly gates to heaven, she is the special guest referee. This is Angel. Well, definitely someone who will call the match down the middle. I mean, there's nothing much you can really say about this. I mean, I'm, you don't see too many of these match types out there, you know? about this but there goes the pyro well, Archangel formerly known as Angel basically got a promotion up in heaven she became one of God's Archangels that's why she's dressed like that Who's the bigger hand with their entrances? Angel or, or Magic Man? But I'm surprised Angel's not wearing a striped shirt. I guess she didn't want to. But either but remember she's the guest referee for this match. And she is definitely the kind of person who will call the match down the middle. I mean, the dark side plays dirty, but the light side keeps it clean. Introducing the first competitor in this match. Rising from the ashes of Arizona, this is the keeper of the Sapphire Flame, Phoenix Blue Blaze. Yeah, she considers herself a superhero. Powered by, in her words, the sapphire flame, which burns hotter than your standard fire. Probably not hotter than dragon fire. I mean, this stuff is fucking. Let's just say it's as close to hellfire as you can get. I mean, Phoenix Blue Blaze has no idea who her opponent is. Until a few seconds ago, she didn't even know who the guest referee was. How the hell did she do that blur effect? Alright, now introducing her opponent. 
Well, this is going to be interesting. Yeah, bloody hell. I need to speak to Jim about this, but introducing her opponent, representing YWL, she is the final boss of YWL, the former international women's champion. This is Hell Thea! Well, I guess Helvia wanted some competition tonight and she got it in the form of Phoenix Blue Blaze. But Blue Blaze is no pushover. You do not want to try to test her. Not in the way you're thinking. Shut up. And Helvia quickly getting into the ring. Slowly looking around the audience. No help here, this is not XPWL or YWL. This is ACW. We're a completely different beast here. But either way, Phoenix is ready. Hell via is ready. Right ref, ring the bell. Let's do this. And there goes the ref meter. If that red bar goes out, then, then Angel will be replaced in the match. So she has to keep it clean. And Helvia trying to bite the fingers of Phoenix Blue Blaze. Standing shooting star headbutt. One. Two. Well, she's definitely calling it down the middle because that was the perfect ring count as you... Yeah, the perfect pin count as you saw. Irish whip, pull back, big boot. And again, she's biting the fingers of Phoenix Blue Blaze. And she's going to do it again. Come on, ref, do something about this. You know biting's illegal. Irish whip, reversal, over the top rope onto the floor. And looks like Phoenix is measuring her up and jumps onto the top rope. And crossbody from the top rope. And kicks Phoenix off her feet. Overhead punch. Oh, she got out of the way of that one. Up it. Oh, broke away and roundhouse kick. Standing shooting star press. Phoenix picks Helvia up. Irish whip almost hitting the ring steps. And Angel telling both of these two to get into the ring. I guess she's like the I guess she's like the rest of us. She does not want to see this match end on a double count out. Irish whip right back into the ring. And Phoenix rolls back in. And release German suplex. And going for the pinfall. One, two, two count. And a stomp on the wrist. Knee drop, but missed anyway. And the uh, Lufez press. And she looks like she was really peppering the bloody fist on that one. Stomp on the wrist. And going for a gut wrench suplex. Holds on to it. Going for it again. A gut wrench suplex. Holds on to it and going for a third one. Looks like we're about to see gut wrench suplex sit out. And if while you're there, pick yourself up a keychain. And Phoenix grabs her Irish whip to the turnbuckle. Big boot to the side of the head. Punch to the side of the head and a release. German, no, she didn't release it. German suplex and ripcord clothesline. Drops down for the pinfall. We have a one, two, kick out on two. And now Helvia measuring up Phoenix Blue Blaze and attempting Wrath of the Gods, but Phoenix, well, basically struggled through. Super kick. Gone for the pinfall. One, two, kick out on two. And Helvia rolled out and suicide dive attempt, but not catching anything. Picks her up. And a over the head, standing belly to belly suplex. And then going for mud hole stomps. Stomp to the face. I guess all she hit was that face plate that Phoenix likes to wear to protect her identity, quote unquote. Jawbreaker. Gotta go for a forearm, but missed. And 
spit out power bomb. Kicks her off. And Irish whip straight back into the ring. And Phoenix follows. As the ref counted six, but jump up, drop, jump up, drop kick. Elbow shot to the side of the head. And Phoenix trying to place Helvia somewhere away from the ropes, but Helvia is quickly getting up. And Phoenix dragging. No, elbow shot, elbow shot. And another elbow shot, forcing her to let go. And holy shit, what the hell? Okay, I don't think that looks right, but either way, it's a chokehold, and Phoenix let, using her elbow to make Elvia let go, and then a bell ringer. Knee strike to the midsection. Caught and slapped to the chest. And Phoenix dragging. Wait, leans her onto the ropes. And a... Holy shit, a somersault DDT. Springboard variety. And Phoenix goes to the top rope. What are we about to see here? The 054. And goes to the pinfall. One, two, kick out on two. And a standing moonsault, but Helvia rolled out of the way. Man, I didn't think Helvia expected this kind of competition out of Phoenix. Maybe she thought because Phoenix considers herself a superhero that she might be just a pushover. Never underestimate anybody. I mean, it's not about the it's not about the size of the dog in the fight. It's about the size of the fight in the dog. And headlock punch to the throat. Club to the chest. Club to the back. Another club to the back. Double axe handle. Double axe handle. And another one of those clubs. Shot to the shoulders, another shot to the shoulders. Double axe handle. Double axe handle. Try to stop the wrist, but Phoenix quickly got out of the way. And rolled out of the ring, and Helvia quickly follows her. Stomp to the face. Another stomp to the face. And jump up, drop kick. And shoulder DDT and going for that armbar. Come on, Phoenix and Helvia, get in the ring. I don't want to see a match this good into the double count out. Come on, in the ring, in the ring, in the ring. Underlay, underlay, underlay. Sorry, I have spent, I have uh, spent time in Mexico wrestling. So I have picked up a few Spanish things, you know, but not all of it. I'm not as fluent as Duck Nivers and Roman is, okay? I mean, hell's bells. He has a bloody, um... You know, a Twitch Orb thing where you can spend it to make him speak nothing but Spanish for five minutes. Stomp on the wrist. On the wrist and a knee drop to the to the lower back. And going for the pinfall. One. Two. No, just a one count. Place your bets. This back and forth match. Who's going to win, people? And elbow shot, elbow shot. And another elbow shot, forcing Helvia to let go. Knee struck to the midsection. And looks like we're out to see a choke slam. And she's gone for a pinfall. One, two, and Phoenix kicks out. And Helvia must be getting frustrated right now. But it looks like we're about to see her patented Wrath of the Gods. And nails it. One, two, three, that's it. Man, I hope those two shake hands backstage because that was a hell of a match. But let's get the official word. Here is your winner, Hell Thea. Seriously, I hope you two shake hands backstage because that was a fucking hell of a match. But now it's time to get ready for the next contest. And remember when I said surprise title match? Well, this is that surprise title match. Glorious. No, I won't give in. I won't give in till I'm 
And I'll explain more in a little bit. Which that little bit is now. Basically, Patrick Murphy said he did not want to wait. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Is for the ACW Intercontinental Championship. Introducing first. Right, before I was rudely interrupted by the, by the ring announcer. Patrick Murphy basically said he does not want to wait until Rhyme City Rumble. He wants his title match tonight. And Luke has it accepted. So, surprise title match. And here comes the challenger. And looks like he's not coming alone. The tag team champions are coming with him. But those two don't look happy about their loss earlier. But I guess Patrick Murphy just wants his brothers whipped by his side to watch him win the Intercontinental Championship. It'll be Patrick Murphy's first singles championship in ACW. Shillelagh, a billy club, and a lit stick of dynamite. What do you expect? Right, now introducing his opponent. Oh, it looks like the champion's not coming alone either. The Wastelander is coming with him. I mean, if you believe this, if you believe his words, Luke Hazard claims he was there the day that the Three Mile Islands meltdown happened. I do not believe that because that happened sometime in the 1970s. He can't be more than 30. Unless, you know, being poisoned by that nuclear radiation gave him the fountain of youth, I do not believe that he was there the day that the meltdown happened. You'd probably be more believable saying that you were there the day the Chernobyl bloody meltdown happened. And there's a better look at the Intercontinental Championship belt. Introducing first the challenger from Dublin, Ireland. This is Patrick Murphy. And now introducing his opponent from the Free Mile Islands. He is the ACW Intercontinental Champion, the Walking Meltdown, Luke Hazard. And right, Luke Hazard, looking at the championship belt. Now it's time for the championship ceremony. Patrick Murphy basically demanded this match tonight. Luke Hazard accepted. He did. Patrick did not want to wait till Rhyme City Rumble, so Patrick Murphy is ready. Luke Hazard is ready. Okay, ref, ring the bell. Let's do this. And Luke Hazard grabbed him and drags him to the ropes. And working on Patrick's arm. Ooh, that looked like it hurt. And grabs him and on the shoulders. And Ooh, the waist wasteland slam. And Patrick picks him up. Kick to the midsection. Close line. And a kick to the chip, well, a kick to the forehead. Drop the knee under the lower back. And Patrick with a gut wrench, power bomb. And slams arm right to the mat. Stop on the wrist. And face first right to the ring, into the ring mat. Kick to the side of the head. I think I blinked and I missed that one. Don't right, roll through, going for those stiff elbow shots. 
And elbow drop. And a kick to the lower back. Stomp missed. And attempting a double axe handle, but Luke Hazard saw that coming with a leaping clothesline. And stomp on the fingers. Another stomp on the fingers. A third stomp on the fingers. And he's going for it again. I don't think that's really going to take away Patrick Murphy's best manoeuvre because his best manoeuvre is the broke kick. He doesn't need his fingers for that. And a punch to the midsection. Kick to the midsection back. And he tried to go for a punch but Luke Heather saw it coming and no, slips through. Grabs him and no, roll through, shot block. And rolled through again and Backbreaker, a backbreaker again, and a third backbreaker. Or should I say the Irish curse backbreaker? And Luke Hazard just broke up the pin. I mean, Wasteland just broke up the pinfall. Did you see Luke? Did you see Patrick giving him a dirty look? And it looks like he wanted to go for the Celtic cross, but nope. And wait, Luke has Wasteland. I just grabbed a steel chair. Referee, you better warn him. Leapfrog. Duck down. And a power slam. Close line ducked. Punch to the jaw. And Patrick Dragon. Wastelander to the I mean Luke has it to the turnbuckle. Back elbow strike. Kick to the midsection. And DDT. And it looks like both TNT and Arthur Knight felt that one as Luke Hazard leaves the ring. Oh, TNT and Arthur Knight just scattered. They do not want to touch Luke Hazard at this point because T because Patrick Murphy will get DQ'd if he does that. Irish whip and tripped over nothing as Luke Hazard grabs Patrick Murphy on the shoulders. No roll through. Whoa, that was an awkward landing. On the shoulders again and a, another roll through. And gut buster. Back in the ring, back in the ring, back in the ring, you two, come on, back in the ring. I guess Patrick Murphy heard me. No, elbow strike, elbow strike, another elbow strike, forcing Patrick to let go. Patrick, what are you doing? Oh, you fucking... No, 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 no. I am not having the match end like that. I am ensuing the rematch rule. In other words, what just happened didn't happen. Right, ref, ring that bell. Let's do this and... Did anyone... Did anyone felt deja vu just then? Okay, the re... The rematch rule I will do only occasionally when I think a title match is bullshit, okay? So basically what happened before did not happen. So erase that from your memory. And gut wrench, power bomb. And elbow strike, elbow strike. Grabs the ankle and stomp to the thigh. Roll to the back and another stomp on the ankle. And kicked through. Overhead punch and apologies, I have to go use the announcer's room. I will be right back.
Hard on back. Apologies about that. Stomp on the thigh. Picks him up and an elbow drop to the knee. And Patrick picks Luke Hazard up. And a running knee strike. Down goes Luke Hazard. Stomp on the shot while on the rib cage. As Patrick Murphy goes to the top rope. What's he going to do here? And knee drop to the side of the head. Going for the pinfall. One. Two. Kick out on two. And TNT was questioning that count. And what's he doing? And going for a hammerlock. Punch to the ribs, punch to the ribs, another punch to the ribs. Forcing Patrick to let go. And Irish went to the ropes. And the far away De Samoan driver picks him up. And Luke Hazard going for a choke slam. Patrick Murphy fights out of it. Ooh, this is getting intense. They're going blow for blow. And blocked that one and basically Luke Hazard was saying bring it on. Slap no blocked. And Luke Hazard's being busted open. And these two are definitely going blow for blow. This is just the way both of these superstars like it. Slap block there, punch the side of the head. Headbutt. And Luke Hazard leaves the ring, goes to the top rope, and elbow drop to the chest. Gone for the pinfall. One, two, kick out on two. And as you can see, the other two members of the band knuckle brawl is getting the crowd behind Patrick right now. Punch to the midsection. And going for white noise. Nails it. And going for the pinfall. One, two. Kick out on two. And Patrick cannot believe that Luke Hazard was able to kick out. But now he's measuring Luke Hazard up. What's he going to go for here? And, well, whatever he was going for, Luke Hazard reversed it. A couple of paintbrush elbow strikes. And the meltdown. Going for the pinfall. One, two, kick out on two. Holy shit, this match is getting intense. And the digital crowd chanting, fight forever. I agree, fight forever. But then again, I still got my match later on tonight, so don't fight forever. And Patrick dragging Luke Hazard to the turnbuckles, face first into the top turnbuckle. And body slam out of the top, out of the turnbuckles, and he's gone for the pinfall. One, two, kick out on two, but only just, bloody hell. Stomp to the lower back. And Patrick looks like he wants to go to the top rope. What's he going to go for here? Come on, ref, get out of the way. Elbow drop in the top rope, well aimed. And Patrick taking the top turnbuckle pad off, and Luke has it. The way that it's got bloody Patrick's attention doing that. Come on, ref, do your damn job. And Luke has it up at leaping clothesline. And slams Patrick's head into the into the mat. And Luke has it picks Patrick Murphy up. And looks like he wants to go for the choke slam. And nails it. And goes to the pinfall. One, two, kick out on two. What in the hell is Patrick made of right now? Probably several pints of Guinness if you ask me. As Luke Hazard has got measuring him up. And meltdown. That's got to be it. Patrick's done. One, two, kick out on two. Holy shit. Patrick really wants this championship. And Paint brushes the foot over Patrick's head. And Patrick has been busted open. And both superstars are showing colour right now. As Luke goes to the top rope. Elbow drop and he missed. And Irish whips the turnbuckle. And Patrick putting him on the top rope. And what the hell is Patrick thinking here? And holy shit, we're about to see. Oh shit. He's going to do white noise from the top, from the middle rope. And nails it! It goes with a pinfall! Come on, ref! 
One, two, kick out on two, shit! Holy shit, this match is taking it out of me. And Luke Hazard, no, Patrick goes out of the top, out of the ring as well. But he quickly slides back in, so does Luke Hazard. And Luke, sh shot to the lower back, Irish whip over the top rope. And guillotines on the top rope. And Patrick Murphy goes to the top rope. And, oh shit. Luke Hazard threw him off. And attempting a pro kick, but he missed. But no, Irish whip. Leapfrog. Duck down. Pro kick. He nailed the pro kick. Go for the pinfall. One, two. Oh shit, that was close. This is coming down to who wants this the most. Place your bets. It's going to win this match. And he's got him on the shoulders and rolled through. And gone for those mounted punches. Aiming for that cut over the eye of Luke Hazard. Stopped to the midsection. And again, Patrick Murphy going to the top rope. Knee drop to the chest. And elbow drop to the chest. Another one. And another one. Oh, that's almost a heart stopper right there. If you know, you know. Knee drop to the lower back. Stomp to the lower back. And Luke has it up a clothesline. Another clothesline. He ducked that one and a leaping clothesline. And now Luke has it gone for those mounted punches, aiming for the cut over the eye of Patrick Murphy on that one. He picks him up. And the meltdown. Honestly, that's got to be it. One, two, three, that's it. Well, this was definitely not the night for the bare knuckle brawlers. But let's get the official word. Here is your winner, and still, ACW and a Continental Champion, The Walking Meltdown, Luke Hazard. Oh, shit, that match took it out of me. And we're not even done yet. Holy dooly. I mean, we just hit the halfway point. All right, the following contest is an Extreme Rules match scheduled for one fall. Introducing first. From Air Scotland, she is the Scottish Norse. This is Erin McQueen. I mean, Erin Quinn is facing her own issues in XPWL right now. There's again a lot of a, a lot of superstars are facing problems in XPWL. It's all because of a certain witch that has been exiled from ACW. Thank fuck for that. But Erin McQueen has no idea who her opponent is. No idea why she signed up for an Extreme Rules match. And welcome to the chat, Cheshire Cat. And if you're trying to spell Dunny, that's not how you spell Dunny. Now introducing her opponent. Oh crap. From 110th Street in Harlem, New York, this is the 187 Gangster, Jackie Rosa. 
Jackie Rosa, a superstar who's basically been banned. Okay. Well, Jackie Rosa, like I said, she's been banned from every other wrestling organization. Just ACW is the only organization who will hire her. And if you've never seen Jackie Rosa fight, well, I hope you like rap music because her song plays out through her match. It's in a contract. I'm not kidding. Aaron is ready. Jackie is ready. Right, ref, ring the bell. Let's do this. And hang on a sec, I just... Wait, phone call, what the hell is this phone call about? Be right back. Sorry about that. Fucking scam calls. I'm starting to get sick of those, but what can you do? Several knee shots to the midsection. And far away slam. And a kick to the side of the head as Jackie gets back up into her feet. Fix her up and jawbreaker. And elbow shot, elbow shot. And another elbow shot, forcing Aaron to let go. Irish whip to the ropes. And elbow shot attempt, but nope, swatted aside, slapped to the chest, attempt, kick to the midsection court, and a kick to the thigh. Irish whip to the turnbuckles, and attempting something, but kick to the side of the head. And flung her out of the ropes. And a springboard clothesline. And well, missed that one. And whoa, 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 clothesline. Picks him up, picks her up, and another clothesline. Picks her up one more time, and another stiff clothesline. Double axe handle. And both Jackie and Aaron leave the ring, but these are no DQ rules. Means no count outs, no DQ. And a slam the table right into the face of, ja of Aaron McQuinn. As Jackie walking around. And whoa, she, whatever she was planning, Aaron McQuinn cut her off at the pass. And I hate that cliche. Irish whip straight back into the ring as Aaron grabbing that painter's ladder that we saw earlier tonight. I mean, that's the ladder the ring crew use to check the ring lights when it's lowered to make sure all of them are working. And Jackie rolled through and crack with the kendo stick. Another crack with the kendo stick. Another crack and roll through. Crack again. And the kendo stick broke on the back of the head of Jackie Rosa. Superman punch. And Jackie looking for a weapon. Grabs a steel chair. Basically warning Aaron to get up onto her feet. And a club using the chair on the thigh. Chair on the knee. We'll drop the chair. Double axe handle. And going for those mounted punches and slap to the face. Ooh, that was a hell of a bitch slap. And Jackie picks her up. And rolled for, and rolls her back into the ring. Quickly slides back in. And goes for a pinfall. One. Two. Kick out on two. No, kick out on one. My apologies. And Aaron... Well, Jackie Rose are measuring up Aaron and a punch to the midsection. Kick to the midsection again and slap to the face. Back elbow strike. Neck breaker. And Irish whip reversal and punch to the midsection. And elbow to the back. Elbow and Glasgow kiss. Going for the pinfall. One, a two, kick out on two. And even the crowd wanted that to be free, so they, so they no longer have to listen to the music. 
And Erin jumped out of the ring. Looks like she wants to go for a toy. And Jackie's just standing there. Wait, no, she rolls out of the ring, grabs another kendo stick. I'm pretty sure a lot of people who are not fans of Jackie are liking this. And the kendo stick has been broken again. Double axe handle. Stomp to the lower back. And mounted punches and slap to the face. Jackie picks her up and Irish Whip straight back into the ring. Well, that's what she carries to the ring, so I guess that'd be accurate. And Jackie slides the, the, the ladder in the ring and roundhouse kick. And Jackie stalking and stomp to the chest. And what's she going to do here? The 187 elbow dive! Yeah, we officially got a name for that. It's the 187 elbow dive. Harris whip and trips over the ring steps. And she's dragged. No, nope. elbow strike, elbow strike. And another elbow strike forcing her to let go. And elbow shot, elbow shot. And another elbow shot forcing her to let go. And another elbow shot, elbow shot. And another elbow shot forcing him to let go. Come on, get back in the ring, you two. Irish whip reversal. And uh, the Claydemore. But that was a very awkward landing on the barricade. And Aaron going for the steel chair. Basically warning Jackie to get up onto her feet. And a club with a chair. Another club with a chair. And Jackie up onto her feet. And a three pitch slaps in a row. Short arm clothesline. I did not think, I don't think either Jackie or Aaron knew they were going to get this kind of competition tonight. And a kendo stick. And dropped it. Irish whip reversal straight back into the ring. And both back in the ring as springboard clothesline. Ooh, she almost head butted the ladder on the way down. And Aaron looking for a trash can. And just flung it into the ring and Jackie waits for her and what ducked out of the way of that one. Irish whip over the top rope and onto the ladder. And Aaron climbing the ladder. Oh, whoa, 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 that, that had to hurt. That's got to be it for Jackie. There's no way she's going to get it back into this match. And Aaron's not done. Baseball in Jackie's face from the, under the bloody outside mat. And ripcord knee strike. Aaron picks her up. Elbow strike, elbow strike. Another elbow strike forcing Aaron to let go. Come on, finish this match. I don't want to hear this music anymore. Pile driver. And a kick to the side of the head. And Aaron slides back into the ring. Picks up the trash cans. Just flung it to the side. And stands up under her feet. And Jackie does not look happy right now. She's gone for a new toy and grabs a sledgehammer. These two are spending a lot of time on the outside of the ring. Someone says if this match is never going to end. An Irish whip reversal and tripped over onto the ring steps. Only just missing. And kidney stomp, kidney stomp. Kick to the side of the head. And hammer lock. And working on the wrist. And whoa, whoa. Double knee to the lower back. That's referred to as the world's longest move. And 187 elbow dive. crowd's chanting one more time and they're bloodthirsty tonight 
As either they're chanting, we want blood, or one more time. And the sledgehammer has been grabbed. And Aaron, I think Aaron might be, I was going to say, I think Aaron might be done. But after that sledgehammer strike, I think she might be done. Hope she didn't have any food, otherwise she'd be all over the ground right now. Superman punch. Irish whip, reversed. Come on, get into the ring, you two. Double axe handle. I think I even heard Aaron scream out, turn that music off. And Aaron quick, and Aaron back into the ring, and clothesline. And spring forward leg drop. Go for the pinfall. One, two. Kick out on two. And Aaron, well, whatever Jackie Rosa was thinking, Aaron blocked her off. What the fuck is that move called? Eh, never mind. Picks up and double axe handle. And Aaron McQuinn just struggling at the moment. And, whoa! I think she was attempting the 187 elbow dive one more time. Glasgow kiss. Gone for the pinfall. One, two. Kick out on two. Man, her battle paint's almost worn off right now. And picks her up. Punch to the midsection. Elbow, elbow to the back of the head. And back elbow strike. And here comes the Claydemore! And again, going for the pinfall right on that ladder. One, two, kick out on two. How the hell is Jackie Rosa still going after that? Pardon me, sorry. Sorry, that was a uh, reckless repeat, not me. Going for several stomps to the chest. And. Slams that trash can onto the chest of Jackie. As she leaves the ring, what you gonna do here? I think Aaron McQueen just wants to grab a new. Ah, she changed her mind. Notice that Jackie Rosa was barely moving up. Ah, trash can shot. She picks up the trash can one more time and slam. Trying to slam it on the lower back. Back to the face and what you gonna go for here? Snap! Oh shit! That was awkward on that ladder. One. Two, three, that's it. Oh, I think that ladder strike was it. There was no way she was getting up from that one. But let's get the official word. Here is your winner, the 187 gangster, Jackie Rosa. Wait, wait, what? Wait, repeat that. She wants to be referred to as the queen of the streets as a championship title? Fuck off with that. But either way, time to get ready for the next match. Ooh, that was close. Next thing you know. Yeah, this next match, I need a break. Because those last matches took me a bloody, um... Yeah, I don't know what. She comes from 110th Street in Harlem, New York. So, you tell me. But like I'm about to say, I need to take a break from commentary. So this next match is not going to have any commentary in it. I will do the introductions. Unless one of the other commentators want to jump in and do it for me, this match is not going to have any commentary. So the following contest is a Triple Threat Extreme Rules match. Introducing first. He is from Canada. This is the Mountie, Ryan Durham. Representing Law and Order, I forgot to mention. He's a tag team partner of our ACW security team leader, Sledgehammer. Who is backstage making sure that Vangelico and Jag do not have another punch up backstage. I mean, that's all they've been doing lately. It's just fucking meeting each other backstage and punching each other up. And what is going on with those two is going to have to be sorted. Thank <laughs> you. 
now introducing the next competitor in this match. From San Francisco, California, representing Breakdown, this is Alcatraz. Yeah, Alcatraz is actually a freestyle rapper from San Francisco, California. And bloody hell, I do got to say, he, he does get on fire backstage when he's warming up. I mean, anyone on request can actually request him do a bloody freestyle on them. And bloody hell, Alcatraz does not hold back. And when you ask for a freestyle on Alcatraz, just know that he's in freestyle battle rap. So he won't hold back as he insults you with rap. When I asked him to do one on me, and bloody hell, I had to fucking shake his hand afterwards because an Aussie can appreciate a good insult. <laughs> Ah well. And now introducing the third and final competitor in this match, representing the LWO from Mexico or oh, Austin. Oh, from that. Ah, oh, forget it. Never mind. He is El Bandido. And I should also mention this match is sponsored by Suplex City Mechanic Shop. If you got a problem with your ride, I say, come down to the mechanic shop where all parts are not hot and prices are a steal. I can't believe I had to read that. But either way, this is going to be a bloody brutal fight. And again, I need to take a break from commentary, so this match is not going to have commentary in it. Thank you for the understanding. Wait, can you repeat that, Ranger? Well, it seems that the Intercontinental title match between Patrick Murphy and Luke Hazard is going to go. It's going to happen again at ACW's Rhyme City Rumble. Patrick Murphy didn't ask for it. Luke Hazard actually asked for it to go on because he was impressed by that match. But either way, well, enjoy the commentatorless match. Thank you for understanding. I need a break.
Your winner, Ryan Durham. Well, that was a hell of a fight. Didn't go as long as I thought it would, but that was a hell of a fight. But either way, it's time to get ready for the next contest. And we still got a long way to go. This is a match I've actually been wanting to see for a good long time. Mr. Right versus Jag. This is a match I've been wanting to see for a long time. So this is going to be a good match. And here comes Jag. Oh, come on, Vangelico, really? God damn it, what the hell? And the referee trying to get him off, get him off Jag. And he's calling for security, and here comes security. Members of... Sledgehammer security team, and they managed to pull him off Jag. And Mr. Wright, honestly, I can't tell if he looks happy or looks disappointed that Jag was just attacked. And you're ringing the bell? Come on! And belly to belly. Wild Stomp missed that one, and crossbody. And rolled through and flowed over. Well, punch to the midsection, punch to the midsection again, and punch to the midsection again. And Irish whip. Right into the barricade. I have no idea what the hell is going on with Angelico lately. I think that fucking waste of... That fucking oxygen thief hyena has something to do with this. He has something to do with that Angelico's attitude lately. I swear to God, it's got to be fucking hyena's fault. Drop down. And elbow strike to the side of the head. And whoa, 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 shit. And the ref waving it off, punch the, and another punch, and a third punch, forcing him to let go. And Jack kind of um, walking with a limp, and a corkscrew, springboard corkscrew, one. Kick out on one. Kick to the midsection. I mean, I know Jag has been attacking Vangelico, but 
and Vangelico has been attacking Jag, but uh, Ranger, you have got to do something about this. I'm trying, all right? I have a lot of people dogging me over the championship, all right? Champions who never got a, former champions who never got a rematch, the Gold Rush Tournament, and all that stuff. I'm trying to work it out. So just leave me be to figure it out, all right? All right, Ranger, all right, all right. Side slam. And he picks him up. And Irish whip. Reversal and back into the ring. And Mr. Wright quickly follows and... What's Jack doing here? And he guillotines in the top right. We do not let Jack's size underestimate you. He may be small, but he is fast and can be a bit powerful. Ooh, that's not good for his knee. Leg sweep takedown. It looks like Mr. Wright is going for a... Well, a reverse figure four. And stomps his face right into the mat. And Mr. Wright dragging Jag away from the ropes. And going for the pinfall. One, two, kick out on two. And Mr. Wright just eyeing Jag and well, Rosen knee. And rolled through, drop kick. I guess he launched the missiles with that drop kick. Elbow drop. Irish whip over the top rope and shoulder tackle off the apron. And he's letting Mr. Wright get back in the ring. Double axe handle. No, Mr. Wright grabs him. Irish whip reversed on the ropes and shoulder tackle again. And Jag going to the middle rope. The double axe handle, but Mr. Wright rolled through. Must have felt that one coming. And nope, Jag lands on his feet. And Mr. Wright dragging Jag to the turnbuckle. No, elbow strike, elbow strike. And another elbow strike, forcing him to let go. And the Spanish fly. And Jag going to the top rope. He's going to step into the danger zone with the shooting star. One, two. Oh, that was close. Overhead punch. And a punch to the midsection. Elbow strike, elbow strike, slap to the chest, kick to the midsection, and DDT. And a stomp to the nose. He picks him up. Nope. Dragon screw leg whip. Stomp to the elbow. And Mr. Wright rolled through it. Holy shit. The trust fall over the top rope. Now you see why Jag is nicknamed the Extreme High Flyer. And not because he used to fly F-18 jets. And Irish whip. Double X handle. And the ref called four, and Mr. Wright got back into the ring. And what is Jag doing here? And Jag gets back in the ring on the count of six. Kick. Punch to the midsection. Another punch to the midsection. A third punch to the midsection, forcing him to let go. And Mr. Wright dragging Jag to the turnbuckles again. What's he going to do here? And a... Belly to belly out of the turnbuckles. And goes for the pinfall. One. Kick out on one. And Jag rolls out of the ring to catch a quick breath. As Mr. Wright goes to the top rope and clothesline off the top rope. Again, bloody hell. He picks him up. And a German suplex. Another German suplex. And here comes a third German suplex. And Mr. Wright measuring Jag up. Thought he was about to go for the fisherman suplex, or the perfect plex in this case. Well, sure as hell not the right plex. And Spanish fly. Oh, God, come on, get back in the ring, you two. Stop.
stop this. Death Valley driver. The Jag picks up Mr. Wright. And he, Irish whips him straight back into the ring. I see he wants to end this match in the ring and goes for the pinfall. One, two, kick out on two. Ooh, bloody hell, that was close. And springboard moonsault from the middle rope. And Mr. Wright looked like he was trying to roll out of the ring to catch a breather as Jag goes to the corner. And he's telling Mr. Wright to bring it. Back elbow strike. And he's dragging Jag back to the turnbuckle and face first right to the top turnbuckle. And headbutt. And explode a suplex into the corner. And Mr. Wright, he's dragging Jag away from the ropes. Looks like he's going to try to get the victory. Okay, maybe not so, maybe not quite. He picks Jag up. No, Jag with a dragon screw leg whip. And Jag picks Mr. Wright up. And what's he doing here? A face plant right in the middle of the, well, not in the middle of the ring, but right in the mat. Close line. And Mr. Wright rolls out of the ring and Jag quickly follows. Back elbow strike. Now punch the ribs, punch the ribs, kick to the midsection. Come on, get in the ring you two. I don't want to see a good match like this and then a count out. Or even a double count out. Just get in the bloody ring. Kick. Punch to the midsection, another punch to the midsection, and a third punch to the midsection. As the ref counts to three and Jag Irish whips straight back into the ring. Mr. Wright back in. And he's stalking Jag. And again, going for that stretch. And he's going for that stretch muffler submission. Is he going to make... No, he did not make Jag tap out. And a knee drop to the back of the head of Jag. And does it again. Stop to the fit. Stop to the wrist. Picks him up and... Ooh, knee struck to the side of the head. And Jag rolls out of the ring. But no, he... He's using the ropes to get up. Punch to the side of the head. And back body drop over the top rope. And Jag quickly gets out of the ring and a punch to the side of the head. Or the back of the head in this case. And looks like he's trying to go for the, fit, the perfect plex. But Jag reversed it. That would have been devastating out there. And even though Jag was attacked from behind as the match started, he's really putting it all into this match. Spanish fly and again going for the Death Valley driver and nails it. Ooh, I think that took off. I think that may have taken the last of the energy out of Jag. Come on, get in the ring, you two. Get up. And Jag's going for it again. This match is going to end in a double count out. I swear. Come on, come on, get in the ring quickly, quickly. Jack, what are you doing? Get in the ring. And Jack back in the ring and he's gone for the pinfall. One, two, three, that's it. Well, here is your winner, the extreme hot. Wait, what the hell is Sven Jellico doing on the fuck? Wait, Jack just saw him. The rest trying to warn him off. God, the ref's not stopping him. Jag, what are you doing? Don't you dare. Evangelico's baiting him. And these two, I don't know. What, what the hell is it going to take to get these two to fucking finish this? And here comes the security team and even one of the cops. But that's not going to be, I don't think that's going to be enough to separate these two. Ranger, you really have to do something about this. I know that already. I'm trying to figure it out. Okay, okay. We all wanna go big. This well, now it's time for the semi-main event of the evening. The second, or well, the first of two semi-final matches in the in the Gold Rush tournament. The final semi-final match for each for the women and the men. 
Okay, the following contest is the second round in the semi-final for the Women's Gold Rush Tournament. Introducing first from Rhyme City, this is Pokemon Girl! Well, it looks like Pokemon Girl is wearing her... Well... Lucario gear tonight. I think that's her way of showing that she's ready for a fight. And against a member of the PWO, she's going to have to be ready for a fight. Because remember, the winner of these Gold Rush tournaments will get themselves an opportunity at either the Women's Championship or the ACW World Heavyweight Championship. And Pokemon Girl is an absolute fan favourite here. And now introducing her opponent. From Cantalot High, representing the PWO Pony World Order, this is Sunset Shimmer! And remember the winner of this match next week will take on Baylor in the Grand Final. I just need to quickly double confirm that. Yeah, that's right, the winner of this match will take on Baylor in the Grand Final in the Gold Rush Tournament next week. So I know Baylor is stuck on a monitor watching this match tonight. Well, right now, anyway. And Sunset's going to have to be ready for this match. I mean, these two are familiar with each other. Okay, Pokemon Girls ready. Sunset Shimmer is ready. Right, ref, ring that bell. Let's do this. Apologies, I've got to go use the announcer's room, hopefully one last time. So I will be right back as quick as I can, because I do not want to miss the very second of this match. Okay, I'm back. Hopefully I didn't miss much. And on the shoulder and standing power slam. To the ropes and... Oh, I have no idea what that's called, but it's bloody devastating looking to see. And Sunset with a snap suplex. I mean, Pokemon Girl has a lot of pressure on her shoulders right now. She wants to have a title opportunity in her home, in her home city which is Rhyme City, because this match, because the winner of that match will get the title opportunity at ACW's Rhyme City Rumble. The first Rhyme City Rumble back, and Pokemon Girl's first opportunity to fight in front of a home crowd again. The two, and the ref counts two. Rolled through, and tried to do a double axe handle, but she missed. And springboard crossbody. Gone for the pinfall. One. Kick out on one. The semi-final of the Gold Rush Tournament. Semi-final. I meant semi-main event. Stomp on the elbow. And Pokemon Girl looked like she was thinking about the Volt Tackle, even though that nothing really doesn't fit while she's wearing the Lucario gear. They've gone for several punches to the knee. And Pokemon Girl going to the corner. Nope. Sunset gets up. Kick to the midsection. And gotta catch them all! 
Going for the pinfall. One. Two. Kick out on two. I mean, I think I just saw... The last gasp about a Pokemon girl with that one, knowing that this could be her last chance to get a title opportunity in front of a home crowd. And Ripcord, no kick to the net, kick to the midsection. Irish whip to the barricade. And a knee drop. And Pokemon girl body slam on the on the hardest part of the ring apron. And Pokemon girl stalking Sunset Shimmer. And decides she just wants to finish this in the ring. And Pokemon Girl taunting her and crossbody. And stump to the thigh. And Pokemon Girl going to the middle rope and elbow drop, but she missed. Oh, that was a very awkward landing. And cut her from the shoulders. Going for the pinfall. One, two, kick out on two. And oh, going for those mounted punches. And again, going for the no. Pokemon Girl reversed it. And Pokemon Girl up onto her feet. No, Sunset rolls out and the Cario. I meant Pokemon Girl with a short arm caught hit. Got hit. With a, Sorry, I'm being confused right now. I'm just both excited and nervous because my match is next. So Jim, Mark, if you're, there, if you're there watching this, when the next match starts, jump the rail and commentate for me, okay? And Pokemon Girl picks up Sunset. And Irish Whip straight back into the ring. And Sunset was taking, I mean, Pokemon Girl taking a quick breather and Springboard Frog Splash! And now, Pokemon Girl measuring her up. Going for the Volt Tackle! Hit with Recoil! Go for the Pinfall! One, two, three, that's it! Pokemon Girl is moving over to the Grand Final! Next week's Grand Final match for the Gold Rush Tournament, for the women at least, will be Baylor versus Pokemon Girl. That is going to be an absolute match. Of the, that is absolutely going to be a classic match. But let's get the official word. Here is your winner, Pokemon Girl. Well, congratulations, Pokemon Girl. You are definitely earning this. You are definitely earning this. Okay. Now it's time for the main event of the evening. And if you've already seen it advertised, it was even advertised on XPWL's last couple of shows, JC the All-Star taking on me in the semi-final match of the Gold Rush Tournament. Mark, Jim, if either one of you are here, jump the rails and commentate this match for me, okay? Okay, the following contest is your main event of the evening and it is the second semi-final match of the men's Gold Rush Tournament. Winner next week will challenge Stone Cold True Blue. Introducing first. From the Ashura Horizons, representing XPWL, the Scouts of Fate and the Pyromancers, this is JC, the All-Star. Again, I am getting nervous and both excited at the same time. Because I feel like I need to win this tournament to get a title opportunity. And I think JC is thinking the same thing. So JC, honestly, may the best man win. And no matter what happens, we can still be friends afterwards, okay? God 
damn it! Sorry, OBS crashed. It should be back in a few, but now I gotta go. Ranger, do the commentary. I mean, do the, do the intro, okay? All right, all right, give me the headset. I won't commentate because this voice kinda hurts after a while. Introducing his opponent from Adelaide, South Australia. He is the voice of ACW, the wild one, Bruce Northaway. All right. Okay, for the people who just came back. Hey, oh, hang on a few seconds. Okay, for the people that just came back on Twitch, apologies. I have no idea why OBS just did that. But either way, I guess I'll do his introduction again. From Adelaide, South Australia, he is the voice of ACW. The wild one, Bruce Northaway. Right. Unless Jim or Mark want to jump the rails and commentate, this match is not going to have any commentary in it, so enjoy the match for what it is.
through the last spot. Let's get the official word. Here is your winner and moving on to the grand final, JC the All-Star. So I guess we've got a grand final match set for next week. Stone Cold True Blue versus JC the All-Star. That again is going to be a decent fight. But though, what a good job, Bruce. Nice try. But I guess you'll just go straight to the nurse's office while I deal with the last part of the show. So let's see if there's any injuries or any other news on tonight's show. Well, and that was obvious. Their rivalry is really getting intense. And it seems Mr. Ryan has suffered a minor injury. I have no idea what, but it doesn't really matter at the moment. But then again, it's only going to be a couple of weeks. But thank you for watching. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here, as Bruce would say. How does it, how does it say that again? Alright, you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. Have yourselves a good one, and be safe, no matter where you happen to be. Right, I better go check on Bruce and backstage, because... Uh, this thing with Jag and Magellico is really starting to get intense. I need to figure a way to stop this.